coming up on the drop zone, Cap. You do anything fun Saturday night? Well, all the guys in my barbershop quartet are dead, so... No, not really. You know, if you ask Kristen out from statistics, you'd probably say yes. That's why I don't ask. Too shy or too scared? Too busy! Was he wearing a parachute? No. No, he wasn't. Well, we got ourselves another Marvel movie in the books, and this one is Captain America The Winter Soldier, which I've been looking forward to for a long time. Um, out of all the, uh, the first phase Marvel films leading up to the Avengers, uh, Captain America and Iron Man are probably my favorites out of that. Uh, trying to decide which one I would put first is kind of tough. I would probably put Iron Man just a little bit above Captain America, but they were both very well done. And um, for the second phase leading up to Age of Ultron, I definitely think Captain America the Winter Soldier is the best one so far. Um, I liked Iron Man 3 and Thor the Dark World, but this is definitely the strongest one that we've seen up to this point. Um, I really like this one. This was a, another solid effort from Marvel. Uh, the story behind this one is Captain America has settled into present-day Washington, D.C. after spending some time as a capsicle, as Tony Stark put it, and uh, is still working as an agent with S.H.I.E.L.D., still running missions, uh, mostly teaming with the Black Widow, and still busting terrorist heads and all that, doing his country proud, and that's all well and good for a while, but at some point, a group of rather brazen terrorists starts attacking S.H.I.E.L.D. directly and even goes to the point of shooting at Nick Fury in the middle of downtown D.C. in broad fucking daylight. And Fury barely escapes with this attack with his life and gets back to Captain America and asks him for help, and it's up to Cap and uh, the Black Widow and his new ally, the Falcon, to figure out who's behind all these attacks. And they soon discover that there is a massive conspiracy going on, which penetrates even S.H.I.E.L.D. itself, and their number of allies and the number of people they can trust starts getting smaller and smaller. And, of course, throughout all of this, they have to contend with the leader of this terrorist group, or at least the public face of the terrorist group, the mysterious Winter Soldier, who is quite the badass in this movie. He has no problems fighting or blowing up anything in his path, and has strength and speed comparable to Captain America himself. And he's definitely a powerful foe for Captain to go against. And I really like this character. I'm not going to say too much more about the character, because even though it's not exactly a well-kept secret as to who this guy really is. And in fact, they pretty much give it away right at the start of the movie, um, if you're paying attention. Uh, uh, in case there's anyone who hasn't figured it out yet and doesn't want it spoiled, I won't say it. Um, I will say that when they actually revealed who he was, that scene worked very well. Even though I already knew who it was and it was not a big surprise, it was... Mainly Chris Evans' acting that sold it. Um, you know, Captain America's reaction to his identity worked very well. Um, in fact, Chris Evans did a very good job in this movie overall, uh, as did the other returning players, Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, Scarlett Johansson as the Black Widow. Both did fantastic. Uh, Kobe Smulders gets a little bit of screen time here and there as Agent Maria Hill. Uh, she's still doing a fine job. Uh, couple other returning players who I don't want to mention, again, because of spoilers, but they did fine as well. Uh, one of which is involved in a pretty big twist about halfway through the movie, which was pretty well executed, I thought. I definitely did not see it coming. Um, perhaps there are some people who've read the comics who would have. Um, I haven't read much in the way of Captain America comics, so I, I don't know much about the backstory of this character apart from what little I've skimmed from Wikipedia. Uh, I know he once punched Hitler in the face, so that's cool. <laughs> um, it's a shame he didn't get to do that in the first movie, but anyway. Um, as far as the newcomers, we got Robert Redford, who plays a man named Alexander Pierce, who is 
uh, one of the higher-ups in S.H.I.E.L.D. who basically has to take over after Fury is uh, seriously beaten down by the terrorists. And uh, he also does a very fine job in this film, but what would you expect? It's Robert Redford. And the big newcomer is Anthony Mackie, who plays Sam Wilson, a.k.a. Falcon, who forms a very strong friendship with Captain America early on in the movie. And, yeah, Sam and Steve really sell their friendship well. Um, the two actors play off each other well, and it's a very strong and very likable character, and I hope we see more of this guy in the future. And if the end of the film is any indication, we definitely will see him in the future. I don't know if it's going to be in Age of Ultron or if we'll have to wait until Captain America 3. We'll see, but it's, it definitely looks like they're keeping this character around. And it looks like they're keeping the Winter Soldier around for a little while as well. And that also makes me happy because I really like this character. This dude is a fucking badass. Well, the directors are Anthony and Joe Russo, who are, from what I understand, new to this whole major blockbuster picture thing. Uh, they've mainly done television shows up to this point. They've done a few movies, uh, none which I've seen, unfortunately, so I can't really comment on their previous work. But for what it's worth, they do a decent job with this film. Um, only thing I can really comment on that I didn't like is a couple of the fight scenes had a bit too much shaky cam, which is sadly a common thing nowadays. I really... Why, why, I can't be the only one who's sick of the shaky cam at this point, can I? Really? Come on. This, this shit needs to stop. It needs to be buried in the bottom level of hell right next to J.J. Abrams' lens flare to burn in all eternity. Sick of it, but, you know, it's, it doesn't ruin the entire movie. It's only there for a couple of scenes, and you know, for what it's worth, the fight choreography is pretty good. Um, in fact, there's a fight right at the beginning of the film between Captain America and a character named George Batrock, who um, is a character from the Marvel Universe. Um, he's not a major player in this film. He's really just a minor villain that shows up at the beginning just to get the story rolling. But uh, interesting thing about this character, he's actually played by George St. Pierre, who, if you don't know, was uh, until very recently the UFC welterweight champion for many years. Um, I think this is his first big acting role. I can't really say much about his acting, good or bad, because he doesn't really do much in the way of acting. He really just has to stand there and look menacing, and he probably has about as many lines as I can count on one hand. Really, he's there so they have someone who can speak with a French accent and do his own stunt work. That's, that's pretty much it. But, you know, for what it's worth, his fight with Captain America was pretty fucking awesome. I really like that fight. And, of course, the other big fight in this movie that a lot of people have been talking about uh, is the, the big one in the elevator with Cap against about 12 guys in a very small enclosed space and... You know, I could probably watch that fight all day. That was just so well done. Really like that. Like most of the Marvel films, there's a, a fair bit of humor thrown in with the action here and there. And the jokes work pretty well for the most part. There's a bit of a running gag between uh, Steve and Natasha, Cap and Black Widow, uh, where uh, you may have seen this in one of the trailers where uh, Natasha keeps trying to suggest people that Steve should ask out, but he keeps coming up with excuses. And that keeps going on throughout the entire movie, and that, that Steve keeps saying, you know, aren't, shouldn't you be concentrating on the mission instead of trying to hook me up with someone here? She's like, it's all right, I'm multitasking. <laughs> I got this. What about Sarah in accounting? Was, was like, oh, the one with the lip piercing? Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> that goes on for a while. There's, <laughs> and it leads to one very funny scene about halfway through the film, which I won't spoil, but it just, it involves a, a very tall building, and that's all I will say. If, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Um, what else? I don't know if there is much else to talk about. Oh! Um, there are a couple of things I didn't really care for in this movie. Um, one, with as good of a character as the Winter Soldier was, there really needed to be more of him in this movie. Even though his name is in the freaking title, I don't even think he's in half of this movie. He only shows up like about 45 minutes into it and for most of the film just, you know, pops in and out. He shows up and blows a few things up, throws a few punches with Cap and then leaves for a good 20, 30 minutes or so. 
and it's he doesn't really get a good chunk of screen time until the very end. And really, there needed to be more of him in this. Um, not a huge complaint, but you know, something that I think could have been improved on. Also, there was one scene in particular that really stuck out in my mind that just seemed uh, like they were pushing it a bit. Um, it's a scene where uh, Cap and the Black Widow and Falcon are trying to fight off this group of terrorists who are again attacking people in broad daylight in downtown DC because they give not one fuck. Not one. And at some point they are actually overwhelmed and are surrounded and forced to surrender. And as they're, you know, sitting there on their knees, hands behind their head, one of the terrorists actually walks up to Cap with his rifle aimed right at his head like he's about to put a bullet in the guy. But then he, one of his comrades stops him. He's like, no, 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 no. He points up at this guy and there's a news chopper, presumably filming all of this. They're like, no, 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 we can't do it here. No, put him in the van. We'll take him somewhere else and we'll execute him in private. The decent thing to do, you know. Now, here's the thing. Throughout this entire movie, they have had no qualms about shooting anything that moves, and even a fair number of things that don't move, in downtown D.C. in broad fucking daylight. Like I said, these guys give not one fuck. But for some reason, they get scared off when a news chopper appears. Oh shit, the paparazzi, we gotta protect our image. Go, go, get in the van, go! Re like, you realize that while you're busy doing all of this shit down on the streets, you're surrounded by tall buildings, which are probably filled with many people who own one of these and are sitting there filming your asses, ready to upload this footage to YouTube faster than you can sneeze. And the news chopper is what scares you off. Really? Now, th the entire purpose of that scene was to have Captain America get captured and then give him a way to escape a few minutes later. That's all it was. You could have cut that scene from the movie entirely and wouldn't have made a difference. It probably would have improved it, actually. Um, yeah, that's that was really the only part of the movie that really took me out of it. Uh, apart from that, it was a pretty solid story and very well shot and well acted and overall yeah but this is definitely the best film of the second phase of the avengers so far and i'm looking forward to seeing more of cap and uh, age of ultron um and for anyone who has not seen the movie yet i will let you know there are two post credit sequences there's mid credits and post credits uh with the mid credit scene uh hinting towards age of ultron i presume and the last one, possibly hinting towards something either with Age of Ultron or just Captain America 3. Not going to say what they are, but, you know, stick around. Don't get up after the credits leave, there because there is some good stuff in there. I did see the film in 2D. I believe they're showing it in 3D as well, but it's a post-conversion. And historically, the, uh, the Marvel post-conversions to 3D have not really been bad, but they haven't been all that stellar either. Like, Iron Man 3 especially was just, apart from a couple of the action scenes, the 3D was pointless. And I, I don't know why these guys haven't been able to... Well, actually, no, I do know why they haven't been able to do a good post-conversion, because these movies are not filmed with 3D in mind. The 3D is just a cash grab. So, yeah, I didn't bother seeing it in 3D, and I don't think the film suffered at all from being in 2D. So I would say save your money and just see it in 2D. And, yeah, but you should put up your money to see this. This is definitely worth seeing and worth seeing on the big screen. And even worth paying full price for 2D, not 3D. And, yep, I guess that's about all I have to say. Um, one more thing. Hang on a second. Okay, since some of you seem to get a kick out of this last time, uh, let's just pick another Mad Lib out of here at random. And let me see, what do I need that I don't have already? Um, 
Let's see, last time I did this, I got plenty of body parts, uh, plenty of adjectives, verb. I did not have any verbs in the last one. So if you would like to contribute to the Mad Lib, add a verb in the comments, if you will. What else? We got nouns, we got plural nouns. Well, this is interesting. Last name of a celebrity. Wonder where we're going to go with that. Uh, let's see. Body part, singular and plural, adjective, plural noun, adjective, plural noun. Okay. So yeah, verb and last name of celebrity. And we'll see where we go with that. Take care. You up. It's time.